The Pantheon's dome is still the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the world. 2,000 years later, the secret is a lost recipe using volcanic ash and the seawater that creates a material that literally gets stronger over time. In the heart of Rome stands a testament to an architectural mystery. The Pantheon, with its colossal unsupported dome, has stood for nearly two millennia, surviving earthquakes, invasions, and the relentless decay of time. If you were to build that same structure today using modern concrete, it would require extensive steel reinforcement. The Romans did it without any. How? They were masters of a revolutionary building material, a form of concrete so durable, so resilient, that modern science is only now beginning to understand its secrets. The story of Roman concrete is not just about architecture. It's a story of chemistry, geology, and a recipe that allowed an empire to build structures that would last for eternity. The standard recipe for modern concrete is simple. You mix an aggregate like sand or gravel with cement, which acts as a binder. When you add water, a chemical reaction occurs and the mixture hardens. Roman concrete was fundamentally different. Their recipe, described by writers like Vitruvius and Pliny the Elder, and also used an aggregate, typically chunks of rock or brick, but their binder was a unique combination of lime and a special kind of volcanic ash known as pozzolana. This ash, which they mined from deposits near Mount Vesuvius, was the magic ingredient. The air in a Roman construction site would have been thick with the fine, gritty dust of this volcanic ash as workers mixed it with lime and water. When this pozzolanic concrete hardened, it formed a substance that was incredibly stable and resistant to chemical decay. But the true genius of their recipe was revealed when they started building in the sea. The Romans were not just a land power. They were a maritime empire. To control the Mediterranean, they needed massive harbors, breakwaters, and piers capable of withstanding the constant assault of the ocean waves. Building such structures with conventional materials was nearly impossible. This is where their concrete displayed its most astonishing property. Modern scientists studying the chemical composition of ancient Roman seawalls have discovered that when seawater comes into contact with the pozzolanic concrete, it triggers a secondary chemical reaction. The seawater dissolves components of the volcanic ash allowing new interlocking crystals to grow within the concrete's structure over time. One of these minerals, aluminous tobamorite, is incredibly rare and difficult to produce in a lab. In Roman concrete, it forms naturally, reinforcing the material, filling in micro cracks and making the structure stronger and more durable as it ages. Think about that for a moment. Modern concrete erodes and weakens when exposed to seawater and chemicals. Roman maritime concrete, on the other hand, actively thrives on it. It heals itself. It gets stronger with time. This is why harbors built by the Emperor Trajan are still intact 2,000 years later, while modern concrete piers built a few decades ago are crumbling into the sea. The feeling of running your hand over a 2,000-year-old concrete seawall, feeling its impossibly hard and dense texture, is to touch a piece of lost technology. This material allowed Roman engineers to build on a scale, and in places, their predecessors could only dream of. They built massive aqueducts that carried water for miles, relying on the concrete's strength and waterproof properties. They built the Colosseum, a wonder of concrete construction 
that could seat over 50,000 spectators. And of course, they built the Pantheon. The Pantheon's dome is a 142-foot wide sphere of unreinforced concrete. To achieve this, Roman engineers graded the aggregate material they used. At the base of the dome, they used heavy, dense chunks of basalt. As they built upwards, they switched to lighter materials, like porous volcanic tuff, and at the very top around the oculus, feather-light pumice mixed into the concrete. This sophisticated use of materials reduced the overall weight and stress on the structure, a feat of engineering that remains awe-inspiring. So why did we lose this incredible recipe? As the Roman Empire collapsed, the complex trade networks that moved Pozzolana from Italy across the empire broke down. The centralized knowledge of the engineers was lost in the chaos of the following centuries. The specific recipe and the deep understanding of the chemistry involved simply faded from memory. For over a thousand years, builders reverted to less durable materials. It's a sobering reminder that knowledge can be lost, that technology does not always move forward in a straight line. Today, engineers and material scientists are studying Roman concrete not as a historical curiosity, but as a potential blueprint for the future. In an age where we are concerned with sustainability and the longevity of our infrastructure, the idea of a concrete that lasts for millennia and gets stronger over time is revolutionary. Scientists are working to replicate the recipe to create a modern, eco-friendly version of this ancient supermaterial. The legacy of the Roman engineers is not just in the monuments they left behind, but in this profound lesson that sometimes to build the future, you must first rediscover the secrets of the past. The Pantheon's oculus open to the sky is a perfect symbol for this enduring mystery, a window into a world of lost knowledge that we are finally beginning to understand. If you are fascinated by the intersection of ancient wisdom and modern science, consider following for more stories of lost technologies.